Yeah, so you from you from Brooklyn, right? Yeah, born and raised. Born and born raised. And raised how, how was it back in the day? I know you like in a lot of other talks you talk about how it was like gangland, it was gang infested, and I know you were part of the Sunset Skins and all that the yeah. all that that went down. How was it growing up in that neighborhood? <laughs> oh well, shit, man. Um, even before um, well, Sunset Skins was the same same time, but but even before, I mean, I grew up in um in Greenpoint and Dupont. I lived there for a little while. Most of my family's over there, and then we just moved like ten minutes away, which is Graham Avenue, you know, between Bush, um, Mesro between Bushwick and Humble. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just, um, I mean, that was pretty much all of New York. You went to Manhattan, you went to the Bronx, uh, you know, everywhere. Even you know, um, burned down buildings, empty lots. You know, everybody was outside. There was music everywhere. Shit was dirty like a motherfucker, but it was fun. Yeah. It was it was a lot like I uh, New York looks nice now like the neighborhood yeah. is nice and clean now and everything mm-hmm. but it's boring as a motherfucker yeah. like uh, I'm bored as fuck I go outside I don't even go outside because I have more fun in my house you know it's like mm-hmm. there's and there's no one in my house you know I have more fun with myself hundred percent yo before you came on we were just talking about how like we want to leave New York City like I love this place but yo all you got to do here is work just work 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 nine to five That's and like there's no time for. there's no time to enjoy life anymore well, this is like uh this is the I guess New York would be like the heart of the United States you know I mean yeah, yeah. all it does is just pump pump money pump like blood the, you know it's like the money capital of the world pretty much you know you destroy New York you destroy just you destroy a lot of you know well I mean, Texas doesn't need the United States. Texas yeah. could cut off. Could be its own country. Yeah, 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 they could cut themselves off and just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've, I've I had plans on leaving. Really? Yeah, I just I can't right now yeah. because um the kids and their schooling and I don't have any real plans, you know, other than gets to a point that we sell the house, sell the house. Why yeah. do you want to leave? Because I feel like it, I, well, numerous reasons. I, I, I just, don't get me wrong, I love New York. I was born and raised here, and you know, I love Brooklyn. But it's changed. Not the, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, they build stuff. Like, I'm not talking about the, the, the land itself. I'm talking about the people, man. I'm, you know, you know I, I, I try to be what I used to be. I even tell, and I, you know, I find something safe. I, I see an old person on the street, you know, he got 70, you know, 60 years, you know. I'm 50, so he's not that much older. But, you know, if I see somebody older, you know, I'll say, I'll be like, yo, good morning, you know, like, how, how you doing? Hold the door. Mm-hmm. You know, I get weird looks. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't expect it. Mm-hmm. Like, really, like, they don't hear it all the time. It's either like, yeah. oh, shit, like, what the fuck you say? Or, wow, this motherfucker said hello, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, people say hello. I'm just, I just like to be good, man. I mean, yeah. been through a lot, seen a lot, know a lot about other people who've been through even worse shit. So I'm not looking to repeat anybody's shit on my own. Of course. Uh, and life is about progression, mm-hmm. you know, no matter what you go through and you still got to progress some way, shape or form. And I, I don't know, I guess my progression would be to get, to get out of here because, um, the seasons one the physical aspect of the seasons change it fucks me up like i'm like i i have allergy problems and you might and then i might sniffle this this that it's not corona don't worry about it <laughs> we're not worried Trust me. <laughs> i'm doing the donald trump right now no mask <laughs> <laughs> we're not worried Trust me. but um yeah i just suffer ever since the um the hurricane sandy mm-hmm. i never had allergies i never had problems with my nose i mean i do have a deviated septum which adds to the problem yeah. it makes it even worse so it gets severe i go four or five hours a day it's just the pressure i take allergy pills i take spray mm-hmm. and i was kind of bugging out because i spoke to skid earlier and i was like dang you know my, my nose is all fucked up i don't want to be then it kind of took a shower and it kind of mm-hmm. calmed down a little bit I'm, i don't have the pressure right now yeah. But in yeah. terms in terms of growing up in New York when it was a way different place than it is now, how do you think that shaped you and the way you think? From from I'm sure the way you thought has changed from when you were younger to now. But you know how did that how did that shape you? It shaped me a lot. Um, I had to grow up quick. I had to know my p's and q's. I had to know where to go. I had to know. I had to be very street savvy. Now you don't need to know. People, motherfuckers walk around. 
it's just the hood is not the hood no more. Oh, yeah, there's still motherfuckers in the hood, believe me. Yeah. And, and, but it's not like the street corners hanging out. and it, it, That that yeah. died like in the 90s, man. You know, I think Giuliani killed a lot of that shit. You know, Giuliani had really attacked the streets and, and hard. But um, um, I don't know. I just, it just, I had to just be careful. And I was on the street a lot. Everybody was on the street. Shit happened. But at the same time, everybody knew everybody in the neighborhood. That no matter how wild the neighborhood was, it was still somewhat of a community and everybody knew each other. Mm-hmm. We knew every shit happened. We, everybody knew before the police did. Yeah. You know? We all knew. We already knew who did it, this, that. Now, nobody knows. Right, nobody even knows who lives next door to them. I, you know, I've been living here 20 years. I don't talk to them. Exactly. It's crazy. I mean... I'm friendly with everybody on my block. You know, I moved into Seagate, in Coney Island. Um, I have this Russian guy who moved in. Um, I have two Russian neighbors. The ones that just recently moved in, they're like my family. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have I go to the yard with them. I go, I, I eat, uh, what's it called? Pilaf? They call it pilaf. Mm-hmm. Here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is fire. That shit is. I don't. I, that's that's yeah, why I don't. Really I want, it's hard for me to stop eating meat because yeah. motherfuckers <laughs> make shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, yeah, so yeah, with the rice and everything. Oh uh, my god! So and then not only that, bro. They they bring out all this other shit. Yeah, yeah. And they make their own pastries. Yeah. This old lady, she's some. They're kind of um Armenian, like mixed. Uh, yeah. that they're they have a like, two uh, three uh, different like Uzbek Uzbekistan. Like, yeah, they're like a, they're like a. Two or three different things in that household. Yeah, he yeah. married, so they speak like two different languages, but they're pretty much the same. Um, um, they make these cream. Uh, what what is it? Those cream puffs? I don't, I don't know mm-hmm. what the fuck. It's some little beige bowl with a little yeah, cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She makes homemade ones, bro. I mean, like phenomenal. Like I'm addicted to it. Yeah, yeah. And they made some for me just the other day, for, like just for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hit them in the microwave because I didn't want them to see it. And kids, <laughs> you know, but. They got to them, man. I came back. There was only like two left. I was like, motherfucker, man. I'm like, <laughs> Yo, I got to get rid of my guns. Community is very important, bro. Like, we're losing that every day. Like, I, like you said, bro, I live in Brooklyn, too. I don't know, like, any of my neighbors. And not only do I not, know, don't I know, not only do I not really know them, but they're out to get each other, bro. They're trying to, like, evict people. They're trying to get the apartment for sale. Like, do you think that's, that's just New York or the whole world? Well, across the street, you know, the, 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 the building across the street, it's like... Um, Four different buildings and one big building. Yeah. It's a big build. We, it's yeah. all houses where we like, but the cross street is like apartments. It's like three floors. Um, the owner is a Hasidic Jew, but the the guy, the landlord there is some Russian dude. You know, um, he's like a burnout. This fucking dude all year round. He's he does some of the stupidest shit. I, I yelled at him a few times. Uh, he throws furniture out of the window. Said a camera case too lazy to carry it down. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, that shit could debris could fly and hit somebody. And people walking by in the street. He's like, whatever. But uh, he uh, he rent controls the place. Mm-hmm. If you're not Russian, you don't live in there. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. You know? Yeah. That's how it is. And that's not fair because it's American. There's rules and regulations. And I, you know, I I don't want to be that. I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm, you know, hey, get out of my driveway. Hey, how come this? Yeah. But at the same time, you know, it's fucked up, bro. You know, I see people come there and everybody deserves an opportunity to live there. You know, well, I, I didn't, you know, Coney Island is, is this is New York, you know? I mean, I don't want to even talk too much about them because there's great and fucked up people on, no, of course, and ev- everywhere. You know, I got Russians that I love, and then I got Russians that I want to punch in the face. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got Puerto Ricans, my own people, that I love, and I want to punch in the face too. You know, yeah, of course. <laughs> but I mean, it's that's why I, I I don't I don't fall into the whole. Just I don't I, I've, just, I've never been a, a much of a follower. Mm-hmm. I've always been just I done my own thing, you know. And I appreciate. And that's why the whole neighborhood thing. When you ask me about the whole neighbor, I'm more appreciative of things. I take things. I don't take things for granted. Like you know, as a kid, and and no one seen the progress of from when I was a kid until now. I love New York. You know, I mean, it's great. I mean, I walk down the streets. So I'm not worried as much as I used to worry when I was a kid. But I yeah. I love being outside when I was a kid. I mean, I used to. You know, my mom argued with me to keep my ass inside. Mm-hmm. You know, now I argue with my kids to get them out of the house. I'm like, yo, get the fuck out of here. I want to run around naked with your wife and my, my <laughs> wife and the house, you with your moms. And the, yeah, yeah. Get out. You know, like, nah, they don't go. 
they got social media now. They got video games. Video games is cool. I don't I don't commend me that much. You like know? everything has changed, changing so much, man. Like when we talked on the phone the other day, it was like, you know, with the whole coronavirus that happened, and then the whole city shut down. Now they're shutting it down again. And then the George Floyd thing happened in the middle of all that. Police brutality is at a at an all time high. And then I don't know if you've seen on Instagram the other day, like. It was a bunch of like the Hasidic Jews like burning a bunch of masks in the street. And it's just like, it feels like it's everybody against everybody right now. Yeah. And then, like you said, you don't know your neighbors. They don't talk to you. They don't want to talk to you. People it's are like, deranged now, man. It's all I d- guess it's, division. Yeah. It's just, there's no respect for nobody. People don't appreciate nothing. Don't respect nobody else's feelings or thoughts. Uh, everybody has the right to say whatever the fuck you want. But people, it's like, if now... I mean, I grew up with friends with different opinions and different views. They like different shit. That never kept us from being friends, exactly. man. You, you be me being this and uh, say, 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 I'm a Democrat and somebody is a Republican and we have different views on how this country should be run. Doesn't mean that we can't. But now it's different. Oh, you don't wear the same. It's, it's, it's the slightest thing. And it's, and uh, but these are the ones who call themselves liberals. Yeah. But they're not liberals to me. Well, that, I'm that, a liberal. that thing has I, changed now. Like what liberal means? That's just that's just changed. Well, liberal now is like a, like it's an actual thing. To me, liberal was never a thing. I was born and raised with with with, with, with certain values, and it's to treat people the way they treat you. Yeah. I treat anybody. I'll, I'll fuck with anybody. You know what I'm saying? If you treat me good, then I'm I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm I'm alongside you. You treat me bad, then I'm not. You know, and it has nothing to do with race. Yeah, mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, so so I mean, I don't understand people. I, I'm, I'm I'm just as confused. I mean, I I wish I had an answer for what people. I don't know why people are becoming more like this. They just, uh, I guess, the medium, the mental manipulation, the, the the pollution in the air. God knows what the chemical Monsanto in your food. Exactly. Yeah. Who fucking knows? I mean, even leaving bottled water out in the sun, they say. The plastic, the plastic, and the creates estrogen, and, and that's why people f- seem to be more pathetic, more butt hurt these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is, man. Really, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I, shit happens every day. Shit, yeah. there's millions of things that happen in the world. I can't control it. If I can't control it, I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah, yeah. And if I can control it and I do something about it, then I got nothing to worry about because exactly. I can do. Either way, I shouldn't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think like that's a big thing in like in Hinduism. Yeah. It's, it, that's what people need to do in this country, man. Because stress is killing motherfuckers, and it's, and it's killing you mentally first, man. It's fucking up your mind. You're on some big crusade. At the end of the day, who knows if if tomorrow's even gonna be here? We were just talking about that. We don't know how long anything could happen. We think that we're all secure, but then something like Corona comes through, or like. She can just change from one day to the next. and It these, hurts me, bro. These societal structures that we have, like, oh, I have this job or, oh, I have this degree, that doesn't really mean anything because, like, nature is more powerful and what can go down is more powerful. It could just, we, everything could change with, like, in a day, you know? Well, that was, uh, you know, that's what, that, you know, like, Africans never have, and uh, oh, Africans never have believed in God. Uh, there was, like, uh, they knew that there was something greater. Yeah. You know, like, nature. You know, like exactly. these are these are things that you can't control. You're not bigger than this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they worship these things, and you know, and not for nothing. We are from this earth. We are from we've we've we we pulled ourselves so far yes. from humanity, what we really are, when what our roots are, that it's fucking up the world. Our energy is to me is fucking yeah, up the so. world. Yeah, because the world it's this. I mean, rocks have metals magnet there's energy in all sorts of shit there's energy in us i yes. mean we have all that shit in us Bro, that's why people walk around so angry so depressed they feel like something's wrong but they can't put a finger on it yo because we're so detached from nature that's pointing all it is. fingers at other people when they're to blame for that Bro. because it's what they're reflecting it's what they're putting out it go it, hits, it affects other people yeah i like i don't i don't like people coming to my house no more and i don't mind if you have to come to my house and you have to vent and you want to let something out yeah i'm there for you yeah yeah, yeah. but you got it we got to do it outside yeah mm-hmm. no energies are real man yeah I, you can't do it in my house man I, you know i try I, you know it's i try not to have that in my house if i if it's too cold outside then i'll deal with it i'll mm-hmm. burn some salt and some incense and you know i don't know kill a couple of chickens who knows <laughs> you know <laughs> but I usually try to do it outside. You I mean, know? like your, your your home has to be like your temple. Yeah. You got to be at peace there. I seen you got like the Buddha statue set up with a little. Well, I love all religions, man. Yeah. I, I appreciate everything. You know, I mean, 
I think um, it's not to be taken mythologically. Hmm. It's a, it's, it's, you know, religion don't does nothing does nothing doesn't exist in this world without math. You know, so you have to. It's 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 science. It's it's. It's spirituality. spirituality. Spirituality is yeah. basically unseen science. 100%. Mm-hmm. You know, it's um, the, what do you call it? The, um, the, oh, the I don't even want to say the words. Uh, I'm saying it wrong. What is it? Just say it. And if you say the, it wrong, whatever. The, 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 uh, imitet and the otet, some shit like that. The fucking, fuck man, I read it once and I can't never fucking repeat yeah, it, man. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> fucking sucks being Puerto Rican, man, because there's only certain <laughs> words in English that I can't fucking say. <laughs> but, um, <coughs> but you know, at the end of the day, it just comes respect. People don't respect themselves, yeah. so they're not going to respect nothing else in life. Mm-hmm. And um, we, we're, we're straight away, we think we're becoming more human, but we're not. We're becoming no. more savages. Mm-hmm. You know, we were more human when we, when we were walked barefooted. Yes, 100%. You know, and I do it all the time. I'm a weirdo. I got a little bit of grass. I, I like to walk around in my grass barefooted. I, mm-hmm. I walk around my house in my flip flops. I take them off when I'm in the grass. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I like to sit in the sun. I don't need to be doing anything. Yeah. I these just are things that like close in, my eyes they, and, and these think. are things that like instill peace, peace of mind. And then you know, like you said, living in New York, bro, with Monsanto, the chemicals and everything that's going down, the pollution, the the media controlling your mind. You have to do stuff like that because you live in a city, like you said, tribes, barefoot. You live in a city, you are so, we're like at the opposite end of that. We're in in like a, in little apartments, in little apartments and uh, rectangular cubes of, of brick. You know what I mean? Well, like you train, you yeah. know, the fighting and all that. So. Yeah. That's human nature. That's part of bro. I always talk about. And, and, always and talk about that. That's important. I always tell my son. I, I, you know, I always tell my son. I don't. I don't. I don't care what you are or what you want to be in life. You want to be a bookworm and just be a dude who reads. Be a dude who reads with a fucking crazy physique. You know what I'm saying? Like who's healthy? Yeah. Who can? You know. Maybe if your hands are full, you might want to use your foot and kick something off the shelf. <laughs> you should be able to, mm-hmm. uh, but everybody should be flexible. Hundred percent. And 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 flexibility is a very important thing. Even if you're not working out, just being yep. flexible alone it, it, it gives you longer lasting life, bro. It, it releases toxins and and, and tension and, and tension from your body that we you know especially now the way we live. Better. You know. You know. Listen. You didn't need it back then when things were easier mm-hmm. because life was good. Life was great. You sit in the fucking, if you're working out in the field, to me, that's... That's working out. It's working out. Yeah. It's meditation. I'm, the sun's hitting me, but I'm, in the world, I'm breathing in that clean air. Yeah. But especially now in these days, yeah, yeah. people should be meditating more now than ever. 100%. 100%. Yo, there's a reason people, they tend to like, they were like, oh, let's go take a vacation and go camping. Let's go hiking. Let's go to upstate. There's a reason people are drawn naturally to that. There's a reason we have to sit in the sun. There's a reason we have to be barefoot in the grass field. We're not supposed to be walking in rubber fucking shit all over the sidewalk and like listening to it's garbage like specific leaking all over the street. Like it's ridiculous. For everybody, right? man. Everybody should be doing it with 100%. this. You know, th- we're not... We're not Nick Cannon saying, you know, only white black people got soul. Like, no, motherfucker, you know, like, you are totally wrong. You know, I, I kind of got mad at Nick Cannon for saying some shit like that. You know, he was, yeah. I understand what he was trying to say. And, but he's wrong about that. You know, we, we, we live in a, in a world where I think everybody on this planet is mixed. So mixed that we don't even know. We think we know you could do your 23 and me. They can only go fall so far back, bro. Yeah. They could only go so far. We don't know what we got in this. Mm-hmm. I, I could have been Asian at one point and black at one point. I could have been, who knows? Yeah. Who cares? Well, the way I see it, yeah, really, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't cares? matter. We here, yeah. you know, we, we have a spirit. Our spirit is our DNA. There's certain things that you do in your life. They say, like, why do I do this? Because that's embedded in you. You know, like I tell these kids in hip hop, you know, you're doing shit that you, that you did as tribal people. You know when they tattoo the cross on here? Mm-hmm. Well, the black, abrig- abr- the black abr- aboriginals that were here because all the, the tribes at one point in, in the Americas were black, mm-hmm. black tribes, you know. Um, the Chippewa, they, they, were, they, were, they were black. They were, they were 
black aboriginals here before anybody. Yeah. And um, they painted a cross on their forehead. Yeah. It's like, you know, because it represented the soulless, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they had little dances that looked like crip walk and this yeah. shit, you know. And the motherfuckers think they invented this crip walk. I'm like, you fucking did it four, five hundred years yeah, ago, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Except you weren't crits, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's things that we do that we preach in life that comes from our ancestors and from the mixture of what the fuck we were back then stuff like that and this is stuff that we don't run with mm -hmm. we don't run with we try to become something that we're not we try to become this new type of human being there's, there's no new, this new race you know yeah. it's just weird well, i don't know a lot of the history just, is like not told completely true either there's a lot of history yeah, that people the churches were like, and that yeah. help with that too you know i mean it was just i mean I'm not so mad at it mm -hmm. anymore because that's what it was back then. Mm -hmm. That was the that was their form of media yeah, yeah. and their form of mind manipulation and things got done and history was created. Unfortunately, bad things happen and good things happen, but that's life, bro. Yeah. Uh, the yin and the yang. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you gotta have an equal balance. And if there's enough, if there's no struggle, then there's no effort to be better. Look at all the great people that came out of shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't have, like, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like in the music industry where these people just came from shit, yeah. nothing. Like, like, a, a like a role with two strings. Like and, a role model. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, who, who, uh, I was going to say Michael Jackson, but I mean, you know, it's a little different because his father took reins of this family. He made them rich because mm -hmm. he made that happen, you know. And sometimes, sometimes I tell my son, you know, I give you this liberty, and sometimes I feel like a dick giving you too much liberty. I should kind of force him to do shit because he's gonna thank me in the in the future, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I, I just rough, you know. I, I don't want him. Yeah, yeah. I want, I want him to follow his calling, you of know. Of course. Speaking but, uh, about like fighting and training and how that's human nature and just like physical struggle is human nature. How did you get into martial arts? So what did you get into first? Boxing? I know you do Muay Thai. Boxing. That's what you got into first? Boxing. Um, I, I went to Puerto Rico and they had a gym with some Olympic fighters, uh, Nicolas and, um, oh, fuck is his name? Well, there were two Olympic fighters in there, an older guy and a younger dude. One guy was like a heavyweight and uh, one but one brought a silver and one brought a Bronx, I remember, and whatever. They had a free gym. In PR? Well, I, I, I fought in New York with just fighting because everybody fucking picked on me because I, mm. I was, excuse my French, and nobody get mad, you know, don't be, but y'all, everybody says this word all day long, mm. but they want to fucking, you know, but I was the nigga in my neighborhood. I was the only white Puerto Rican. I was getting chased by all the Puerto Ricans, all the Dominicans, all the brothers. Everybody chased me. Everybody wanted to fight me. So I went to, I went to Puerto Rico. And I said, well, fuck it. I'll go to Puerto Rico. It was too crazy. I was getting into all these problems. I went to Puerto Rico. And same shit. Kids were out there like, everybody knows each, everybody knows each other. So they're looking at me and they're like, who the fuck is this dude? They're like, yo, you from New York? I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, what's up? You know, I put my hand out and they're like, nah, man, we're going to fight. Everybody wanted to fight me and mm -hmm. fucking, so they had a gym and I joined the gym and I boxed and half of the kids that I fought were in the gym already. That's why I got my ass kicked a lot because they were yeah. all boxers, you yeah, know, like yeah, mother, yeah. every time I threw one punch, I got five. I'm like, yeah, yeah. that happened, bro? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, became friends and had a whole little crew of boxing dudes and, yeah. and, and in Puerto Rico, we just fought other towns. You know, mm -hmm. I was in Sidra, and we fought kids from Calle and mm -hmm. kids from Mago Buena and kids from other little towns that come over. And we, bah, bah, bing, bah, and it was fun, mm -hmm. you know. And you still see some of those people, and I still see a couple of people on Facebook till mm -hmm. this day. I'm like, yeah, hey, remember me? Like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, I used to get chased a lot, man. I was the white boy, you know. And then when I got into metals, forget about it. Nobody in, the, in my neighborhood understood metal. There was mm -hmm. one or two gangbanger dudes that got me into the metal. But other than that, 99.9.5% of my neighborhood, man, you know, it was like disco, yeah. hip hop, you know. Well, like, like you said, the neighborhood you grew up in was, it was like gangland. It was gang infested. Yeah. When you were younger, were you part of any of those gangs? Uh, Mesero Boys. Started mm -hmm. my own thing called the Mesero Boys. 
And um, we were kids. We were kids, you know, but we had Latin King colors. We had, you know, it was yellow and black. And um, damn, I'm, I, might, I might even have a photo of that somewhere. Actually, I'll send it to you. It's an old photo. Right. And we were just kids around the neighborhood, stuff like that. Um, uh, nothing serious, you know. Uh, the neighborhood was too serious. There's too much serious shit to get into. Yeah. A lot of my friends got into other cliques and shit. A lot of the cliques that were on now all became MC clubs, you know, like the dirty ones and and um, well, not the hell burners because uh, a lot of them disappeared. There's only maybe a couple. There might be a couple dudes left, but you know, in the south side, still all the clubs is around. You know, uh, the crazy. Uh, uh, South Night Street, well, not the South Night Street bikers, uh, the bikers, the unknown bikers. Um, I still see stuff from um, assassinators and stuff like uh, Dukes. Uh, I seen, um, I see some old patches still coming around. Yeah, dirty ones are still around. Um, you got forbidden ones. You got dudes from my neighborhood, forbidden ones. Crazy Pistons, you know, respect to the ghettos. I always represent the ghettos. Um, that's the that's the coalition that we in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, yeah, I never really, I never really wanted to be a part of. I could have been LK, you know, Latin King. Yeah, I had an opportunity to do Latin King thing, you know, a couple cousins and that and whatnot, but nah, you know. And the Sunset Skins, that wasn't like a gang; it was more like a crew of. Man, it was kind of. It was like when you joined, it was like smaller, right? I'll tell you a story. When I first got into metal, I was do, doing the whole gang thing, biker thing, you know, the miserable boys trying to be, you know, just I look like an outlaw. And um, we had hair. We started getting into metal. Me and my boy Angel, two Puerto Rican kids, you know, me and, and me and Angel were on the train, and we'd never seen skinheads before. We knew about it kind of, but we didn't really know nothing about that, you know. And I. I look into another train car. We were in one train car. We look at another train. We see a whole bunch of look Spanish kids, you know, a couple white ones, big motherfuckers, you know, tough looking dudes, you know. And all that look, giving us dirty looks. Me and Angel look giving them dirty looks. Like, oh, fuck that. I had a big knife on me. And, you know, and Angel's like, Angel fights, we fight, you know. And we're like giving these fucking dudes dirty looks and shit. No biggie. Nothing happened. We go to meet some girls that we met. You know, they invited us to their house. Uh -huh. So I go, me and my boy Angel go to this girl's house. The girl's name was, uh, I think, Valerie. And there was another girl there. And she goes, she said, yeah, I'm waiting for my boyfriend to come. So a little, a little later, this fucking skinhead dude walks in. <laughs> and he was the same skinhead dude. I was looking at me on the train. I'm looking at him. And we didn't say shit to each other. We just looked at each other. And we went, like, aren't you? And we both started laughing. We're like, ah! We just started fucking laughing. We're like, get the fuck out of here we're like we were just on the tree like fucking you know staring each other down like mm -hmm. we just started laughing me and this motherfucker kicked it he's half puerto rican puerto rican italian dude uh my boy richie richard rodriguez uh, mm -hmm. he's actually with a big mc club right now uh unknown bikers um that's my boy uh, um i go way back with him so you know we kicked it that night we came boys and then i i got to meet the rest of the skinhead dudes and um the twins and and lusty lou and 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 the rest of them and, and um i i started hanging with them you know and i never wanted to become a skinhead you know i, I like my hair i was getting girls left and right and i was going to the metal clothes i was banging girls left and right bagging them bagging and these guys skinhead dudes are like yo man it's your fucking hair it's your hair i'm like nah man it's game you gotta have game like nah it's your hair so one day they always try to they they they, they have me sleep over their house and they're like yo when you fall asleep we're gonna cut, we're gonna shave your head I was like you better not motherfucker you know one day I surprised them I shaved my head and they were the fucking happiest motherfuckers <laughs> in the world so I started doing the whole skinhead thing with them and um but um I never really you know I don't know I I didn't it wasn't like something I was set for I met the dudes we kicked it we got along. 
you know, um, I w- they introduced me to the hardcore scene because I didn't know shit about CBs. They brought me to CBs. Mm. Richie Rodriguez brought me to CBs for the first time, you know. And I was in the pit dancing fucking people up. I danced hard. Yeah. And there was some skinhead kid that had a, uh, a, a spider tattoo on his neck that was giving me a dirty look and he wanted to fight. So I put my hands up and said, let's fight. So he was looking around for other skinhead dudes like to jump me because he's yes, like, yo, yeah. look at this long haired dude. Yeah. And that's when Richie was like, nah, he's with us, man. If you're going to fight him, we'll fight him one-on-one, you know? So I was, I was in Lemoore's, you know, long hair, everybody's skinhead or a punk. And I'm, I put my hands up. You want to fight, motherfucker? I'm ready to fight. The hair don't mean shit, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I know your appearance don't mean shit. Yeah, you know? of course. Yeah, neck tattooing can scare me, you yeah. know? I know? You know, I came from Williamsburg, man. I came from Graham Avenue. The fuck was, whatever was going on in Seabees was... Nothing was a here. blessing for me. I'm like, oh, I could deal with this. Ain't nobody dying here, you know. Ain't nobody getting shot and stabbed in this motherfucker, you know. So I was cool with that, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and Harker was just uh, it was a whole new ball game for me. Yeah. You know, it got me out of my neighborhood. How'd you kind of save my life? How'd man. you get into that? Did somebody introduce you to it. Yeah, yeah, the skinhead dudes. Yeah, yeah. I, I I found them awards for the first time. These metalhead dudes from my neighborhood. There weren't too many metalhead dudes mm-hmm. in my neighborhood. And um, it was uh, Edwin and um, Edwin and some other dude. Edwin and Ralph, I think, took me to Lamorts for the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, and I didn't really know, but they they weren't they weren't into the same thing as I was into. Mm-hmm. They were more into like the hair bands and stuff like that. They weren't. They took me to go see Ace Fearly. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, great! That guy was so coked out of his mind. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's coked out all right. Man. He's like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. he's feeling. And believe me, I know he's coked out because we hung out with him one time in Manitobas. And the Lower East Side, yeah, and, yeah. And my boy had packages and they were all gone. Because <laughs> he's feeling took them all. Mm. <laughs> but uh, that was the first time going to Moors. And then um, I met the skinhead dudes on the train, like I said. And went to, I met Richie in the house and we became friends. And then they took me to... Uh, Lemoore's, I mean, uh, CB's for the first time, and that was it. That was a big, dis- I still went to Lemoore's because I still like the metal bands. I, was, mm-hmm. I love metal. I love metal, you know. Metal was more entertainment for me, mm-hmm. you know, ah, you know, and, and just, the, oh, sorry, the, good, just bro. the energy of the music and the power and all that. Hardcore was more of a movement for me, mm-hmm. you know. I got into politics. I became more of a, more political, more of a rebel, and more of a re- revolutionist through hardcore, which is weird now because more than, Seems like the hardcore scene now is like all sucking that po- political dick, mm-hmm. you know. Like when I was in hardcore, we were like we were political, but without being involved, you know. Like fuck both sides and this, that, and all that. Yeah. We, even we saw for what it really was, but now people are really like, and, and these some people that are from back in the days. I'm like, damn, bro, yeah. you too old to be a, like conformist, man. We at that age that we set in our ways, even if we're wrong, even if we're wrong, we don't give a fuck. I'm set my ways already. I'm 51. I'm going to be 52. I don't give a fuck what anybody tells me. I lived enough. I came through a really fucked up neighborhood. I seen the, prog- I seen the change. I seen the change. I seen the progression. And if anybody's still stuck in the rut, still stuck in the hood, and, and living in on them fucking circumstances, and it's because you don't want to get out, bro. We got out. I got out. And we didn't have social media. We didn't, we didn't have YouTube. We couldn't put, you couldn't put a fucking, a bottle rocket in your butthole and shoot it out in the sky and have two million views and make money off of it. I couldn't, we couldn't do that. We didn't have access to stupidity and make money from it. We had to, we had to be real about it, you know, and nobody was helping me with my career. Nobody told me get a career. Mm. Nobody, nobody. All the only people that helped me were the gang members. When I was into music, they were like, yo, you like that rock and roll? Everybody else was like, yo, you listen to kill your mother, kill your father shit, and kill your devil. But they were the only ones that were like, yo, you do play music, bro? Get out of here. They told me, get the fuck out of this neighborhood. If you can get a chance, make it big and get the fuck out of here. Everybody else was like, ah, you know, trying to bring me down. Yeah. But the only people, my, people in my family, they, they didn't mean any harm, but they were just like, you know, uh, just finish school, get a job, get married. My father's from the hillbilly from Puerto Rico. That's, that's, he didn't even go to school. You know what I'm saying? He he took care of his grandparents. He he worked his whole life. You know, I mean, he did good, and and I love him for it. I'm glad he 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 was who he was because 
<laughs> Sorry, I, I hate talking about my dad being, <laughs> because uh, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, bro. You don't. I, have to. I love the dude, bro. Yeah. Uh, him being simple kept me kept me real, and uh, I could have strayed off easily, man. And just keeping my father in mind made me a better person. Because as I'm like, you know, one day I'm like, I'm gonna have kids. Yeah. This motherfucker right here, you know. And uh I'm gonna be better than him. I don't think I can. <laughs> My mm -hmm. father was he was great because um we had no money. We didn't have these luxuries and shit like that. But we had fun. My father always kept you know, kept us going to family. Um uh, you know, he, he left my mom when, we, when he was young, but he always kept in touch with me. He always came around when he could. I'm the one who fucked up. The last 15 years, I didn't really see him much. I could have had, you know, I, I toured the world, man. Been all around the fucking world, and I could have just gone to Puerto Rico or not, dead, you know? But mm -hmm. I didn't, you know. But, you know, uh, last couple of years, we went. I saw him the last two years. Uh, I'm trying, I wanted to go this year to see him, you know? I just wanted to make up for all the lost time. <laughs> Uh, but him being a simple dude, bro, it was like the best thing for me, man. Just be, a, just, just, you know. There's more to life than to than to it, but I'm not gonna blame him for that because he didn't know much about that. You know, he's not from that generation, so I'm not gonna. Oh, my dad should have fucking told me. You know, he he told me to be good, and that was enough. You know, be, just be a man. You know, and uh, I, t you know, I do the best I can. You know, I wish I could be, be a, better, a better son to him and visit him more and stuff like that. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, he's still here. I still got plenty of opportunities to see him. He lives and, in Puerto Rico? Yeah, he's there. He, he, he ain't coming back away. He spent mad years here working his ass off for nothing. He wasn't able to have nothing. He went back to Puerto Rico during his retired years and worked and owned the house, you know. Owned the house. That was a couple of cars. You know, he did good, and uh, he's great. He's always been. He's always been a great dude. He's always mm. been a great dad. And uh, uh, my mom was a little rougher. My mom beat the fuck out of you, knock your teeth out, wouldn't say shit, wouldn't tell you why. My dad, you know, he would at least break it down, and yeah. sit there. You know, he spent a couple of minutes smacking the shit out of me, but he spent a fucking couple of hours explaining and breaking it down to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't touch my kids. But when I, I get on them, I do what my father does. I, I, I break it down. I, I try to see let him see, you know, yeah. where I'm coming from. And I try to explain to him that I understand where he's coming from. I try to meet him halfway. But I try to be real with him. I try to be his dad. I try to be his, his, his uh, I don't know if this was on there. No, it's all good. Just whatever. It doesn't matter. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I fucked up a lot on, on life. A lot of wasted time. I didn't do too many bad things, you know. Uh, the things that I did, uh, that needed to be done, you know. There was money to be made, and we had to play on the streets. We played on the streets, you know. I never really got into the street culture like that. There were so many people in my neighborhood doing it, you know. I dibbled and dabbled. I took some money and got something, bagged it up, and went out and did this. And It wasn't consistent, you know, because... I was one of the few people on my block getting off the block, yeah. you know, because of music. And, and once the music thing came out, you know, it became less and less. And I, I love my neighborhood. I always, I always went back, you know. I, I think I spent more time still hanging out in my neighborhood than with the hardcore scene. Like, I was always at all the shows and I always broke bread with everybody. But uh, hardcore wasn't my life like that. Like, some people have it. Like, oh, hardcore, and they tattoos, oh, I have to do hardcore. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I loved it, and it was a part of me, but it's not my life. My life, my this, being in the streets was more my life. It, my friends and, and and what I did there, and and my family, and the, just whatever was going on, it was more bigger to me than hardcore. You mm -hmm. know. Oh, you got tissue, bro. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Right now. So, uh, um, I never really wanted to 
be that dude, you know. Oh, I'll call this that, you know. And I love it, man. I respect yeah. it, and I, I think it's great that people. But I was always into a lot of other things too, mm-hmm. you know. I love my martial arts. I love my boxing, you know. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, it was just you know, women. That yeah. Was, that was a number. I think that took all my time, you know. Uh, and uh, you know, it was just. It is what it is. I did whatever I had to do. I'm here now. It's where I'm at. I really don't have no complaints, bro. I've, 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 I've done stupid shit, but I've never done anything that I could never look myself in the mirror and, and be proud of. You know, the violence was the violence. Some of it was necessary. Some of it was unnecessary. Uh, stupid shit here and there. I, I did a lot of the basic shit where everybody people did. You know, nothing too traumatic. I mean. When did you start realizing or thinking about all this? And you mentioned Hinduism earlier. You're into spirituality. You're into like, uh, you know, you talked about meditation is like working in a field and having the sun hit you. When did all these thoughts start coming into your into your mind? Uh, I just just want to I want to know who I was. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I, I don't know. I, I, I did all these things and I, I know who I am. But I, I wanted to know who I really was, who I was inside, you know, what, not who, what the world's trying to make me to be or what people, or off, you know, surrounding influences have on me, uh, you know. And uh, I just, I, I figured I, I start with some shit with just basic culture, looking into my culture and being a mixed race, you know, being native and European and black because we're, we're all three, even though you don't see it. <laughs> I tell everybody mm-hmm. uh, that I'm, I got a white skin, native soul. Can I say? Uh, Whatever you want, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. And the black penis. Yeah. <laughs> but it's white. <laughs> no, but, you know, we are mixed with mesos. I guess you would call it meso. Uh, mixed indigenous, indigenous people. Um, so with all that, I did a lot of, you know, I looked into European culture. Uh, I looked into... Native culture, African culture, because in Puerto Rico, you know, uh, it's all there. It's in it's in our music, it's in our food, it's in our culture. It's it's yeah. no matter how white you are, in Puerto Rico they call you negrito. Mm-hmm, yeah, you know, little nigga, not in mm-hmm. the bad way. Like in in, in there, like little, little you, you know, my father used to call me negrito all the time. Yeah. You know, and when I first went to Puerto Rico, and he's like, negrito, come here, negrito, this then, mm-hmm. and I'm like, motherfucker, I think my co- my dad's colorblind. He thinks I'm black. <laughs> I'm looking in the mirror like, did I get dark or some shit? Like, you know, but you know, um, it's it's just what it is. It's we 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 cherish our native culture, we cherish our native roots. But I want to know more about them, just than just the everyday shit. Like I, I'm, I say native words. Grew up saying native words that I didn't even know they were native words. Mm. You know, I'm like, oh, this is native. Mm. I'm like, oh shit, I didn't know. Like ching ching, you know, ching ching is like means a little bit, or mm-hmm. a little small, you know? Like my father used to say it all the time, and I used to say it. My f- some people like, hey, how are you, you want a drink? Yeah, a little ching ching. Mm-hmm. Which, bullshit. My father never met, believed in a little bit in his life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he would drink for four hours straight. <laughs> and like, I see you got the, the Taino life, the ultimate pride. What is that? Uh, this Taino is uh, Arawak Indians, uh, Arawak uh, of... Uh, the Arawak Indians, uh, South American Indians that ended up in the Antilles and in Cuba and even in Florida. And they actually, they even have traces of Taino Indians and so we're even farther up than Florida. Maybe like in, I'm going to say Georgia, New Orleans, maybe in the swamp areas, I'm not sure. But they were here in the States, you know, so it's like a the, the whole Bermuda Triangle area. Um St. Thomas and all that, I guess, in Jamaica had Tainos, uh, Mm -hmm. Santo Domingo, Cuba, um, you know. So, um, shit, well, I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, Oh, the Taino shirt. Well, I just bought the shirt because it was just representing Taino culture. And it's got a little tribal Mm -hmm. shit in there. Because I see also on one of your, the pinky ring you got on, that's like a, that's like a, Yeah, well, this is, um, this is from my boy, uh, Gabe, man. Thank you, Gabe, man. Thank you, man. I really love the rings. Uh, He made these rings for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he's rolled some stuff on there for me too. That's sick. 
Yeah, I think this one has like new. Because it almost looks like one of those like tiki dolls. Yeah, yeah it's a That's tiki face. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is uh, Sandoval Social. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My man's rings. He makes all these rings himself. You check him out, Sandoval Social. Check him out on Instagram. Mm-hmm. <laughs> shit is fire man yeah. uh, he makes great stuff man yo you talk about um like knowing yourself and uh you know trying to understand who you are as a person what do you try to do in your daily routine to like get back to that like to not stray away from that especially like we talked about in a world full of noise what do you do personally when you wake up or like in your daily routine that helps you stay in tune with like who you are well i just try to s- i just try to be i just try to make my day easier i just try to wake up in the morning and just uh just just to be happy to wake up <laughs> yeah. some people don't wake up you know uh I, I don't know i just try to i just i just don't i just don't i'm tired of the bullshit bro i i went through so much as a kid it's just i just i don't need it unnecessary stress uh i just and i'm only human because i get caught up there my son will tell you because i go a whole day really really positive and i i can really lose it quick you know because i like my i like my peace you know and if you interfere my peace i can really i can go overboard but i gotta also i'm working on that uh i've been working on that for years uh self-control my temper all these things help me uh i mean smoking weed yes i mean the weed yes whatever that's i mean i physically need it uh, I don't smoke it because I want to. I smoke because I, I, I feel like I need it, man. It's I took meds and never worked for me. Weed works. But um, just being spiritual, man. Uh, just letting go of the bullshits, the things that you don't need in your life. Uh, exercise helps. Eating helps. Uh, being outdoors helps, you know, uh, nature just breathing in air sitting in the sun um uh, works for me i'm not gonna say it works for everybody it, it works for me uh just simple things you know mm-hmm. uh i don't i'm not a good meditator mm-hmm. you know I, I try to meditate but i got two dogs and every time i meditate motherfuckers either licking my face or the only one got to try to put his butt in my face they, they're, they're really it's one of the reasons I can't do anything because if I'm going to meditate, I'm going to get on the floor and meditate. Yeah. And um, my dogs are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. But they, there's, a, there's a lot going on. It's really hard for me to... If I do it, I'm going to have to go somewhere far. You know, just not in the house because there's a lot going on in the house. I, I can't, it's really hard for me to meditate. I, I'm still learning how to try to do it. I, I really don't know. I don't. I can't grasp it. When they try to, when they telling you that, that you got to clear out your mind, it's really I don't know how. Because no matter how hard I try it, there's always something in there. Yeah. So, I'm just, I'm trying, even if it's just the breathing aspect of it, just taking the breaths and just calming my body, and I, I try to do a, a little bit. I don't do it much, but every now and then when I'm alone, I don't, you know, I try to do it. I don't, I guess I'm a little embarrassed. Yeah, anyone, anyone who's ever ever tried to meditate seriously, like actually sit there in whatever posture and really focus on your breath and clear out your mind, will know how difficult it is. You can't even no, do it for I can't. for five seconds. Five seconds, you already find yourself thinking of something else. It's very, very difficult. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm trying to think of one thing to to let go of all the other things, but then I'm like, but I'm yeah. still thinking of that. You know, yeah. What if I just count one, two? Does that that work? Can I count and just mm-hmm. concentrate on numbers? Yeah. Would it work? When did you start trying or like thinking of these things? Because you know, like you're known as the one of the vo- like the the vocalist of Marauder. People don't think of like you meditating. People don't think of you like you know what I mean doing these things. When yeah, did I'm not a up? big meditator, but I've I've tried it. Yeah, yeah. it's just a. It's a I don't know if if I'm doing it wrong or is it just a thing that you got to just keep trying until you master it. Like mm-hmm. you just just got to keep doing it and eventually just it'll, it'll, you. I don't know. I guess you go into a trance if you concentrate hard enough. You put go into a trance. Mm-hmm. I mean, we do it all the time. You know, just in different ways, and yeah. you know. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm trying. I would like to try. I would like to get together. The thing is, I don't. I don't have a circle of people mm. like that around me mm-hmm. you know um i always find myself being the only one you know 
that that thinks the way I think yeah. to that extent. I always find people that think with, agree with some of it, but not all of it. Yeah, you know, and I don't know. I don't know. I just you know. I just try. I just try whatever I can. If my kid, if I, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not dead yet. I'm only, I'm only 50, 51, you know. I, I still, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I still wanted to get back into Muay Thai. And people are like, yeah, it's not good for your body right now. I'm like, I don't feel that. Yeah. I don't feel that. I are really the people, don't feel Are the people it. who are saying that it's not good, have they ever tried it? Do they know? Because I know the Muay Thai, the Thais, they do a lot of, they, their sparring is different from, from what you see in the, in the movies, is different from the, yeah. even just regular boxing. Regular boxing, the sparring is hardcore, but yeah. in Muay Thai, I know their, their sparring is more technical. They do a lot of technical rounds. Yeah, and just the tapping on the shins alone, I, my shins are not even completely <laughs> dead. <laughs> yeah. You know, I still have, Yeah, yeah. like, you know, and I mean, I, it's, they're good to the point that if I run around the house and I bang my leg into something, it's just like, ah! And I keep going. Yeah. Anybody, anyone, anyone else be on the floor like, ah. Yeah. But um, <coughs> I, I don't know, bro. Um, some people train that not, not too many people. No, no. Nah, you know, even when I went to, the, when I was fighting in Fight Factory, I didn't really have too many friends there. A couple mm. of Russian dudes, you know, um, were cool and stuff, but a couple of them didn't really speak well English too well and. And you know, I don't, I don't, I don't go to the gym to talk too much. Yeah. You know, I don't want to interfere people's workout. And I don't want them to interfere with my workout either. You know, if you got something to say, and say it. You know, we talk, and you know, there's a there's a moment when I'm taking a little break. I'm off drinking water, mm. taking a breather. I don't mind talking. You know, but I I just feel weird going up to people. I just say hello, hey, what's up? Tap them on the back. Let's go. Mm. They don't see me. Boom. I just show. You know, respect and stuff, and but I don't really try to interfere too much with them. Mm-hmm. But uh, a lot of the people that don't don't take Muay Thai, they train, but never not really Muay Thai. Yeah, because I could totally see if 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 uh, someone doesn't know and and they just box or something, they'd be like, "Yo, you can't be sparring when you're this age, or this many times a week. You're gonna give yourself CT." I don't know, but, man. I love it, man. Yeah, I love it, and I I wish I had, I was able to spar now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, because I mean. I love training, but not enough. It's 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 not the same than sparring. Like, yeah. I rather spar more than train. Yeah, that interaction with another human, and you're thinking about yeah. what they're gonna do, what you're trying to do. It yeah, it because, makes you feel alive, bro. Because even if you don't get an opportunity to get in shape, and you and and you work on your on your on your boxing skills, like I told my son, even like there's a lot of I, I know a lot of my friends who who just box and they, they don't dedicate too much on their body. Mm-hmm. I think they work on that cardio because yeah. they want to go for distance. But I seen some dudes that when they take off their shirt, I'm like, bro, you box? There's no way in hell you box. You got fucking sizzle chest. Mm-hmm. And then the hands come out and you're like, oh shit, yeah, yeah he boxes. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's got, you know, nice footwork, you know, you know, you know, sets up punches nice. Don't let a you know, that's when people say don't judge a book by its yeah, cover. Yeah. You know, you I feel like really. I feel like uh combat sports, martial arts, boxing, muay thai, all that will show you really not to judge a book by its cover because yeah. people will look like the softest people you've ever met and they've been training for seven years and they're sharp. Yeah. And then there's someone who looks scary, comes in the first day, and they don't know anything. They get hit, they start turning away, and they don't know what they're we doing. We had a kid like that. Charlie, little Puerto Rican kid. And he had, for some reason, he looked like he had blush. His cheeks were always red, yeah. mm-hmm. and he always smiling. He like, like a little, little smile was always in there with his dad. And he looked like a nice little innocent kid. He would fuck kids up. Yeah. Man, he's, he, but he, he was like, I don't know. He was evil. He, he, we thought it was an innocent smile, but it was more like an evil smile. Like, yeah, I'm gonna kill somebody today. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but he was a good fighter, man. He was really yeah. good, and he just didn't. He didn't. His face didn't say that. Yeah. You know. And there's some people out there that faces tell you they they got some scary faces yeah. that you would fuck up in a heartbeat. Yeah. You know. I know yeah, some real crazy. ugly motherfuckers. I'm like, yo, bro, your face is scaring me, bro. Like, you could get a job scaring people, you know? <laughs> it's wild, man. It's fucking... What's up? All right. So he's... 
So he's trying to tell me something. Now we were talking about this a while ago. We were working out actually in Coney Island Beach. You know those bars on the on the sand over there, yeah, the calisthenics yeah. bars, and um, a bunch of people would come up. It was like five in the morning, and uh, you do bars, you do the, the like calisthenics, yeah, yeah. yeah. Try to like work. That's out what I, that's what I want to get into. And those are good. Know? Yeah, body weight, you can't go wrong, man. That's like yeah. I, when I do my dips, I try to uh, take the legs. Oh, uh, go mm. parallel. Parallel, yeah. and I get, I get, bro, I'm, and it's all here in the wrist, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And I get to it, like I'm like, oh shit, you know. But you gotta just stay with it. It's I gotta like, stay with it, it's bro. About I gotta, but I don't have that motivation. Mm -hmm. It's um, I have um, a lot going on, you know. I have a club. I got a lot of stuff with people in my club. I got my children. I got you know my career. Um, and I got my wife, and I got family, and I, we all have these things, you know. And I got dogs, and but um, I need to, I need to be around um, more people that that are doing that. Yeah. Cause I go, I go to the park, and I don't find anybody. Mm -hmm. I find a couple of people working out there, and um, and I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very friendly, bro. I'll go. I'll 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 talk to anybody, man. I go up there, like, hey, what's yeah. up? And they don't talk back, bro. Yeah, we're neighbors. We should hit the park soon. Bro. <laughs> and you ride too, right? Yeah. You gotta teach me how to ride, bro. <laughs> I'm with it. You teach me how to ride. Forget. It. I've been deaf forever, <laughs> man. Shit, man. I'll jump a bullet. I'll jump a fucking bullet uh, for bro. you, bro. I don't need no returns. You know, if it's a Nerf bullet, I'll yeah. jump in front of that <laughs> motherfucker for you in a heartbeat. <laughs> it's all love. <laughs> Yeah. Paintball, even a paintball. I'll take a paintball shot for you. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, look at look at uh, is this some of his his videos? Is him at the Coney Island? <laughs> Yo, that's you. I'm yeah. on your page, bro. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you were on my page I'm a uh, minute ago. Oh yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look a lot taller. Yeah, <laughs> nah, people say I don't look like that <laughs> in person. But you, you're, you're probably solid, man. Yeah, I don't really post my face. I don't fuck with the whole selfie. Um, bro, you got to help me get that, man. Bro, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do any of that. But I mean, just you doing that shit and, and, and being with a little group and we have a little music, we just chit-chat. That's motivation enough, man. Yeah. Like I, That's just for the videos, man. I do basic stuff, man. You could do yeah. like regular push-ups. Push yeah, during the quarantine, yeah. me and him, that's actually how we started this podcast. I was in Massachusetts, yeah. and uh, I would FaceTime him, and we just do we just get money on bars like the one I got there, yeah. just like simple so ones. Home, yeah, man. we would just yeah. we it's would just, just I can't do wide. Yeah, it's yeah, annoying, but doors, it's what it's what we had, you know. So we would just FaceTime. We do push-ups, dips, uh, up, like the uh, pull-ups, sit-ups, and all that. I could do more now with with, with pull-ups and dips than I did I did when I was younger. Really, it's crazy. I just I, I don't know. So I could do I couldn't I could never do diamonds. I could never do. I I put on my vest today. I had forty yeah, I put I forty that. pound vest yeah. and I just sh I, I, you, know, you know like four or five diamonds. You yeah. know. I want to get one of those vests. I've been using like a backpack with a twenty five pound plate in it just to do push ups here, but I want to get where one the fuck I got that vest. Um, mm. I'm sure they got it online. Home Depot. Online. Yeah. Oh, they got it at Home Depot. No, I'm Home Depot. What am I saying? Models or something. Models. That's yeah, what I yeah, meant. Yeah, yeah. You know, man. This is this is the thing about my wife. This, I, I you know, I, I love you, baby, and I'm sorry that I put you through this. There's only certain. There's a. There's all these things in life. There's so many things in life, but I only have one or two names for everything, in, like especially people in Hollywood. Okay. And and I say the names wrong. You know, um, uh, the guy that played uh, Conan. Uh, the bad guy in Conan, the black dude with the voice like that. Well, <laughs> um, James something. I'm so bad with uh, James. movies and stuff like that, bro. Jeez, Errol. I got to look it up. Is it James something? James Errol? James Maybe. Errol Jones? Or something like that? It, well, I say his name wrong. I, I call him James Elmo Jones. I can say Elmo. And then they have the other Mexican dude has a name kind of like him, and I say that one wrong too. But it doesn't matter who we're talking about. If it's a man, woman, child, black, white person. In Hollywood, I, call, I, call, I, I name them the same thing, and my wife has to spend like the next 20 minutes trying to figure out who I'm talking about. <laughs> so yeah, she And she finds out. She yeah. figures it out. But I'm like, you know, James Elmo's Jones. And I'm talking about like a woman. Yeah. You know, but, and I, I kind of do that with everything. Yeah. I, 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 I try to keep it simple, man. And if people don't, like I told my daughter, my daughter gave me a dirty look about something the other day. And I said, listen, man, 
I'm going to say shit the way I say it. Mm-hmm. I know the new generation, you guys, oh, you can't say that no more. Yeah, yeah. I've been saying this shit forever. Yeah. I'm going to say it. And I'm going to say it in this house. I'm going to say where the fuck I'm at. I'm your dad. Don't ever question me on that shit. You don't like it? Yeah. Shrug your head. Just do whatever you need to do. But I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to talk the way I'm going to talk. I'm going to say uh, the things I'm going to say. My Lord, my Lord, like, you can't say those words no more. I'm like, who said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. Are they arresting people for it? Yeah. No, right? <laughs> then I'm going to say it. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Nobody, I don't mean nothing wrong about it. It's just the way I grew up. It's exactly. my, my upbringing. This is the way I know. This is why I call motherfuckers now, mm-hmm. you know? I don't know. That's in the hallway. Yeah, but yo, man, uh, it's been an hour, yo. I want to thank you so much oh, for, yeah, sure. for pulling up. I just I just looked, too, because I'm like, damn, my boy's probably outside. Yeah, he's probably tight. <laughs> he's like, this motherfucker. He yeah, probably yeah. left this shit. <laughs> he's in Coney Island right now. <laughs> yo, yeah, it looks bro. like we're, it's going to be like a circus <laughs> show with all three of us on the back of your bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that's your ride? Oh, damn. Yeah, he was my ride. But, yeah, bro, thank but, you for thank you for no, so no, much no, for pulling you, up, bro. Man. I really I just, enjoyed this. Um, I really, I really... um. Um, I'm sorry that I, you know, I'm, I'm a little nervous because I've I never really done a podcast mm-hmm. before and there's so much I want to say and, and I can never really put the words together, but, um, I just want to thank you, man. Seriously. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you man. Having me. Yeah. Uh, it was a great pleasure. Um, I know a few people out there want me to shout out to them, but shout them out. Shout out to fucking true Yorkers lifetime, uh, warranty, my man, Das TWR. Ammo, 420. What? Uh, Access pool. My man right here, fuck yeah, Gray Boy 718, aka my son. <laughs> and uh, to everybody out there, just um, living life and trying not to get up caught up in the bullshit. You're doing the right thing. Don't get caught up. Be yourself. Be free. Be happy. And just live life, man, because life is short, man. Life is short. Make the best of it, bro. And don't get caught up with this bullshit, man. People are trying to, people are, are people are, are dropping and they just don't want to fall by themselves and they're trying to take people down with them. So let them fall. People, that's their own choice, man. Rise above, man. Life is too good, man. Forget everything, man. You never know, man. Live it up. Peace. All I got to say, man. It There's nothing pleasure, else man. to say, bro. Yeah, Real you, talk man. is necessary. Yeah, peace.